Hey everybody, this is Mr. McKee with Net226. Uh, today I'm going to go over Packet Tracer 2.6.6, which is Verify Single Area OSPF version 2. All right, so on my workspace for Packet Tracer, take a look at that. I have uh, one LAN with PC1 connected to R1 router. There's the network. There's its IP address. Um, we have another LAN up here with PC2, that network connected to R2. We have an ISP network that can go out to the out to the internet, um, and then we have a branch office LAN which is has let's see this network and PC3, and then we have down here that's not connected. Uh, switch four R4. Uh, wireless access point and then a laptop. All right, then we have uh, redundant or I guess redundant or backup routes, which is root, but you want to think about it. All right, R3 to R2 and R3 to R1 and then between the two lands over here on the, on the left, R1 and R2 have connections. So R1 has three interfaces connected, R3, R1, R3, and R3 have three interfaces, R2 has four. All right, so without even looking at this, probably, because we're gonna be um, verifying single area OSPF, we're not gonna have OSPF running on this link, probably on that link, this link, I would say not this link, and then not this link, all right. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the instructions. All right, dressing table, just like I said, R1, which that's weird, R1 has four interfaces. Okay, R, what in the world? R, hmm, why do you have, yeah, you can see this curriculum's new, right? R1 Jet 3, it should be connected to what in the world? So maybe we'll maybe we're gonna figure out why this is connected like that. So in this thing, R2. You see right now R1 has three, R2 has four, this is R2 has three. How confusing is that? All right, R3 has four, which I can see that because it's gonna be connected. Maybe it's gonna connect both ways. All right, ISP router just has an interface, that's fine. All the PCs have IP addresses, default gateways, PC1 should be 1.1, going to R1 to give it 0, 0, that's fine. All right, so hopefully this will make more sense as we get through it. All right, so objective in this lab, you will use the uh, CLI commands to verify the operation of existing OSPF version 2 network. In part two, you will add a new LAN to the configuration and verify connectivity. All right, and then does it have R4? Yes, yeah, see, even R4, I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, so identify and verify and verify the status of OSPF neighbors. Determine how the routes are learned in the network. Explain how the neighbor state is determined. Explain the settings for the OSPF process ID, add a new LAN to the existing OSPF network and verify connectivity. All right, you are the network administrator for a branch office, which branch office is down here in the bottom right, of a larger organization. Your branch is adding a new wireless network to an existing branch LAN office LAN. All right, the existing network is configured to exchange routes using OSPF version two in a single area configuration. Your task is to verify the operation of the existing OSPF version 2 network before adding the new LAN. 
when you are sure that the current OSPF version 2 LAN is operating correctly, you will con connect the new LAN and verify OSPF routes are being propagated for the new LAN. As branch office network administrator, you have full access to the iOS on routers 3 and 4. Okay, You only have read access to the enterprise LAN routers 1 and 2. Okay, Using the name branch admin and the password. All right, so we have read access to R1, R2 for the branch network administrator for R3, R4. So R3, R4, full access. The other one's read access. All right, so verify the existing OSPF version 2 network operation. The following commands will help you to find the information needed to answer the questions. All right. And these are all show commands. All right, so step one, verify OSPF version two. Uh, wait until STP has converged on the network. Uh, you can click the packet fast forward time button to speed up the process. I don't think I need to do that since things have been running for a little bit. All right, continue only when all link lights are green. So everything looks green, everything looks good. All right, so log into router one and use the username branch admin and password branch one two three four execute the show IP root command. Okay, so router one. You can see it's it's showing it has neighbor connections, hopefully to three dot three dot three dot three and two dot two dot two dot two. Okay, so username Try it again. All right, branch, branch one two three four. Oh, username. Uh, don't lock me out. Branch admin. All right, password. All right, now we're in. All right, cool. So let's do a show IP root. Okay, so R1, let's see what we got here. All right, so looking on here, we have a gate, we have a um, default gateway, 172.16.3.2. To really any network, all right. And let's see. Let's see two sixteen three two. Is router tubes s zero zero zero. So the default gateway is here. You can go up there. All right, so how did R1 receive the default route? Well, it should have got it through OSPF. Let's see. And because right here, it's telling us that, okay, here's a connected network, which is right here, connected to us. Uh, the local interface. So you can tell that's a network because that's 24. This is a actual interface because it's actually 32 off of gigabit 00, which is right there.
All right, OSPF showed us that to get to the 2.0 network, which is up here on connected to PC2, you do that via 172.16.3.2, which is this interface. That gave us from, told us that from OSPF. We're directly connected to 3.0, which is right here. And then the actual interface for that is that one. Serial 000. Um, well, this is the network. This is the interface. All right, this is an OSPF. It's telling us that dot one, 192.168.1.0, get to that one via this inter this IP address via this interface. So serial. 001. All right, go out this interface, go that way. All right, so. And 10.6 is on the 10.4 network, which is right there. Right here, I mean. All right, 10.5 is this interface. All right, and finally, the 8, 10.8 network via this interface, which is going to go that way. All right, and it was learned by OSPF. So everything with an O shows right here, OSPF. All right, hit more. All right, and you can see right here, too. The gateway of the last resort, which is all zeros, forward slash zero, um, go here via this IP address, via this interface. And mouse over that, 172.16.3.2. All right, so that should be a, let's see, okay. Had a router one, received the default route. Well, we knew that from OSPF. From which router did R1 receive the default route? Let's see. All right, so it got it from here, from router two. If you mouse over that, you can tell. Oops. All right. 17, 16, 3, 2. All right. Let's go back to here. All right. Let's see. How can you filter uh, output of show IP root to show only routes learned through OSPF? Um, I would say, let's do this. Probably a pipe. Show IP OSPF. IPOSPF. Show IP roots. There we go. Show IP root OSPF. All right. So that's all of our OSPF stuff. Default roots down here. Root to these networks. 2.0 is via that interface. 1.0 via that interface and 10.8 via this interface. All right, let's see. All right, so you can probably do it like that or you could do show IP.
show IP routers. Hmm. Include, oh, let's do include O. Include big O. All right, there we go. Include big O. All right. So diff two different ways you can do show IP root, pipe, include uppercase O, or you can do, like I did, did before, show IP root OSPF, include O. All right. And you can tell if you do show IP root, include O, it identifies all your um, your little identifiers whether it's uh, local connected or OSPF and then show IP root OSPF include O literally only shows you that so either way is, either way is fine so you could use either of those all right so let's do X, now, number our B is execute the show IP OSPF neighbor command on R1. Which routers have formed adjacencies with router 1? All right, so. The way you can tell that is just kind of like mouse over it. And see, 172.16.3.2 is the 2.2.2 uh, neighbor ID, which is router 2, and then mouse over 3, uh, 192.168.10.6 via serial 000, which is that one. All right. So both those routers have performed adjacencies. What are the router IDs and state of the routers shown in the command output? Well, it tells us right there. That's one and that's another one. All right. And then the, the interfaces are just, if you make your uh, command line interface a little bit longer, it doesn't, doesn't put it on the next line. All right. Are all the are all the adjacent routers shown in the input? Mm, I would say yes, because router four is not even, not even literally. It's like air gapped right now. It's not even connected. All right. So use the command prompt on PC one. Ping the address of ISP router shown in the addressing table. Is it successful? And just to let you guys know, most of this is just questions. You'll do, I think, one little configuration at the end to connect uh, router 3 to router 4. So you'll be submitting a Word document, which I'll create for this, your .pka file, and then a um, screenshot of your completion rate. All right, so let's go to PC1. Go to desktop, let's go to command prompt. Ping the ISP router. Let's just see what that is. Let's go right here. All right. So it is pinging it. You got that request timed out the first time it did a um, ARP translation. So if you pinged it again, it wouldn't have any timeouts. All right. So let's go back to now to where we were. All right. So this is a, is a is it successful? If not, do a clear OSPF process command on routers and repeat the ping command. All right. So step two: verify OSPF version two operation on. R2. All right, and same thing that we're all, we only got um, read access to these. 
So the login will be the same as the other one. And this right here shows you you have neighbors with 3.3.3.3 and 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. Right, so branch admin username and then branch with a capital B. One, two, three, oops. All right, so we're logged in there. All right, execute the show IP root. Show IP root. All right, so that shows us all of our stuff just like the last. Let's see. And the last time I didn't, I just hit the um, space, uh, space bar to go all the way down. Because, let's see, static root, gateway of last resort, 64, 154.5. <clears throat> Make sure that's the same. 54.5, so that's this one over here. If I click on that, I can't click on it right there. And 54.5 was the same thing we pinged before on the ISP router. And just like I was telling you guys before too, like they'll give you a block of addresses, say if this is the block, well hopefully that's not the block because you couldn't have any extra IP addresses, but you'll lose one of your like if, there, if you have a routable public IP address that you need for your business, your ISP, their router, like our router, th this router right here is actually sitting in our in our server room up in another building over campus. So you'll lose that interface and you'll lose uh, this interface. All right, there's two addresses gone that you can't even host IP address or host web servers or like our NetLab server. So that's consideration. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty normal. Let's get back to where we were. All right. So router two, we're in there. Show IP root, verify all the networks and topology are shown in the routing table. So 1.0 is there. That's one. One dot zero would be assigned with OSPF. You would have Waxy well, one seventy two sixteen. Where's one dot zero? Okay, one dot zero is there. All right. One one i two one sixty eight one dot zero is there in our branch office, and then. This one's a remote one too. 192.168.10.4. That's one's remote. All right. Uh, one going point two. I, I brought back up my router one. I just wanted to look at it. You know, asking me that question. How is it assigned? Well, if you see right on router one, we're saying that router two gave router one the default um, default gateway. So if you see right here, O, and then E2, if you go up here, E2 is the uh, OSP of us, uh, external. So that was assigned externally with OSPF, all right? So that was assigned, but if you look at this one in router two, router one was assigned its default gateway from router um, two. So if you look at router two, it has an S, right? So it was, that was statically assigned, and then the asterisk is candidate default. So it was assigned by the administrator on this machine. All right. 
the ISP gave them that address and then they statically assigned it. All right. All right. Let's see. All right. So we answered that. Enter the show IP OSPF interface. Get rid of some of this stuff. Show IP OSPF interface. Gigabit through zero. All right. What type of OSPF network is attached to this interface? All right, good. Process ID, router ID, network type, right there, cost one, because it's directly attached. All right. So that should answer it broadcast. All right. Are all, uh, okay, are OSPF hello packets being sent out this interface? Uh, let's look. So it'll actually tell you in this interface. So R2, this interface is gigabit zero, zero. So when I when I looked at this before, I, pro I said probably not. There's probably not going to be a, um, it's not going to have OSPF on it. If you look right here, it's a passive interface, so it's not getting hellos. All right. Because you don't you don't really need it anyways. You don't want it sending hello packets out this interface, but it knows that there's an interface or there's a network connected to it, so it's set to passive. Because like if we do show run, actually. Can I not show run? Oh yeah, it's not gonna let me do a lot of stuff. I'm not logged in as administrator. All right. Well, I should be going to oh, show run. Show. RS. Yep, look, I, I can't look at the running config. It's not in there. For this inter for this um, user name, user account. All right. So using the command prompt on PC two, ping the S zero zero one address on router three. All right. PC two. And serial zero zero one on router three. Zero zero one. All right, I'm going to include sixty eight dot ten dot ten. All right, so we can ping that serial zero zero one is that one. So it is successful. Now let's scroll up a little bit. All right. So verify OSPF version two operational router three. All right. Let's go to command line. You notice it didn't it didn't make us log in here. All right. So let's do show IP protocols. 
All right, so routing protocol is OSPF 10. Router ID is that. Number of areas this router is. And this number of areas in this router is one. One is one normal. Path four. Routing for networks. All right, so from here. Let's see. 10.4. 1.0, 10.8. All right, routing information sources. It can see all the other um, OSPF routers. All right. And that's, that's actually the question. Router 3 is routing for which networks? All right, you can answer that. All right. Execute the show IP OSPF neighbor. All right, there's our two neighbors, router 1 and router 2. All right, what is the neighbor priority shown for the OSPF? Uh, neighbor routers. Priority is right there. All right, using the command prompt on PC3, ping the address of the ISP router shown in the addressing table. All right, and that's the 65. dot 100. dot 54.5. Alright, so we can ping that in a problem. Alright, so it was successful. Alright, add a new branch office LAN to the OSPF network. Alright, you will now add the pre-configured branch LAN to the OSPF network. Step 1, verify OSPF version 2 configuration on R4. Do an eight, go to privilege exec, show run, pipe, begin, router. You now add, verify the network segments are present for the networks are connected on it. Connected to not send OSPF packets. All right, let's see if this will work. Can router OS. So that's going to be an inter that's going to be a passive interface. The networks is going to be connected to will be eleven dot zero, which is passive. The network will be a one dot zero. Hmm. So let's see. And that's the passive interface that's not going to send OSPF uh, update packets. All right, connect branch office router to OSPF version 2 network. Using the correct Ethernet cable, connect the gigabit 00 interface on router 4. All right, so let's do this. Gigabit 000 interface on router 4. To the gigabit zero one interface on S three. Connect is locked. Okay. Oh duh, I'm doing a 
Let's do a serial. No? Wait a second. I'm doing. Let's see. Oh, that makes more sense. All right. I'm connecting it to switch S3. All right. That makes way more sense. All right. There to here. All right. And it says gigabit zero one. Okay. So it's actually connecting to this network, which makes sense. All right. Let's do a fast forward time. All right, everything's converged now. All right, what state is displayed for R3? So we're there's the state right there. So we're looking good. Okay. All right. Using the show IP OSPF neighbor command on determine the state of R four. Wait, what? It's hard to read these instructions. All right, show IP USPF neighbor. All right, so full. All right, notice that. What is the state of R4 different than the state of R1 and R2? You guys should be able to figure that out. And that goes back to a slightly different type of OSPF configuration. But if you notice this, it's not just saying full, it's showing this for R4. And then if you do we'll do that. So we're in R3, so that'd be gigabit. You notice in here, you got a DR and you got a DDR. Alright? And you got a switch sitting in between them. Alright? So why is the state of R4 different than the state of R1 and R2? You can answer that. Use the command prompt on the laptop, ping the piece the address of PC2 and is it successful? So from the laptop, ping PC2. So let's ping 172.16.2.2. Alright, so it's good. So we are at 100%. So basically this was just a good overview of um, OSPF version 2. Alright, we connected a router. All right, something I'm not going to tell you guys exactly what it is, but something a little different right there for our branch office plan. Uh, all right, we're in, we're still in single area OSPF, but there's something a little bit different. And that's it. All right, took about 40 minutes, a little bit longer than I would hope, but um, everything's good to go. Yeah, don't I guess don't really worry about this. It's very strange why that has four interfaces. Router 2 has three interfaces. It's not, I guess it's not necessary for the, for this. And then this has, I don't like that there. Let's be the, oh, I can't even do, can I do show run on that one? Yeah.
So the outer three. Oh, I didn't want to do that. But anyways, I won't take any more time, but there's some little configuration issues with R1 and then R2 and actually R3. But anyways, not to worry. We got through it, so it's good to go. All right, thanks for watching.